People have been enjoying Hickory Hill Park for decades. By most accounts, it's the largest park in Iowa City at 185 acres. The only park that comes close is City Park. I'm not including Terry Trueblood. It might be outside the city limits, I'm not sure. And at least one respected person indirectly implied that City Park at 107 acres is larger than Hickory Hill Park. I'll be talking about that later. To understand the history of Hickory Hill Park, we have to study the histories of Oakland Cemetery and Regina High School. What is the origin of Hickory Hill Park? Where did the land come from? Was the land of the park originally designed to be parkland? Since the park's beginning, there have been land acquisitions. When did they occur? How big were they? What is the potential for future growth of the park? What are the restrictions to further growth? In the 1980s, a dam was built on land described as near Hickory Hill Park. What was its purpose and what are the possible ramifications for the park? In the early part of this century, a home was built to house individuals who contracted communicable diseases like smallpox. Its remains are in Hickory Hill Park, not far from the cemetery property. As in other areas of Iowa City, there has been an interest in archaeology. I'll explain what was done in the park. And I'll address one more controversy that has involved the park, that of the First Avenue extension. In 1965, Iowa City voters went to the polls to decide whether to accept a bond issue that would convert 80 acres of city-owned woods and grassy slopes just east of Oakland Cemetery into a Northeast Park, simply labeled as a Northeast Park. A proposal had already been made to name the new park Hickory Hill Park after a brief consideration of Hickory Hills with an S Park. The bond issue for the park passed by a wide margin, even though voter turnout was low. In addition to ascribing the 80 acres to the new Northeast Park, a tract of private owned land, privately owned land was included. Louise Janes named the park Hickory Hill Park. Here's the original plat of Iowa City dated 1839. Iowa City was surveyed into 100 blocks, each one with a number and each block with eight lots. In addition, there were some out lots, or perhaps you could call them out blocks. In 1843, one square block of outland land, outlot land, was donated to the people of Iowa City by the legislature of the territorial government of Iowa. Iowa was not yet a state. This was outlot number 10. I'm showing it in red. It was the block just east of Governor between Church and Ronalds. This was the original ground of Oakland Cemetery. The cemetery was expanded three times over the following 80 years but I cannot tell you to what degree it was expanded. As I said in my opening remarks, in order to understand the property of Hickory Hill Park, it is necessary to study Oakland Cemetery. According to the administrator sextant of the cemetery, it now has about 40 acres of burial ground. That's today. I'm going to use a current map of Iowa City to show the additions to the cemetery. So here's the original size of Oakland Cemetery in red again. I studied an 1870 map of Iowa City to ascertain the size of the cemetery. It's not real clear, but I made a diagram of what I thought it would be. This is my guess for Oakland Cemetery in 1870. If true, it had grown to about six times its original size. In 1919, the city purchased approximately 48 acres of land from a man named Christian Gullicher. The 48 acres shown by my blue figure is probably inaccurate in shape, but I want to give you an idea of about the size. In 1950, the city purchased 40 acres of land from Claude and Mabel Woods, bringing quote, to about 80 acres, the amount of unused land, unused land, 
owned by the city for burial purposes. The black area that I'm using to represent the 40 acres is uncertain. But now we have a pretty good idea of the land that was gained by the city for quote unquote burial purposes. That is a lot of land for burial, far more than the city required. So the bulk of the land from these two parcels from 1919 and 1950 was left to grow wild, that is to naturalize. In 1964, a parcel of land comprising about 29 acres came up for sale. I've colored the area in yellow. There's quite a history involved with this property. So I want to give you a little historical information here. You can see that I'm showing two former Captain Irish dwellings. Well, who was Captain Irish? Many of you have heard the name. Captain Irish was Frederick Macy Irish. And I think that ties into the Macy's department store. I'm not sure. Born in New York State. He went to sea as a young man, we thought as a whaler, hence the name Captain Irish. You like to keep that name, I understand. He traveled to the newly formed Iowa Territory and found out about the new capital city to be. He joined with Chauncey Swan, one of the three commissioners who were appointed to select the site for the capital. Irish also built a place called Lean Back Hall, L-E-A-N, Lean Back Hall, which was a hotel with a large room that slept perhaps 40 men all on one long quote unquote bed. This hotel was a gathering place on the day that the first lots were auctioned off in Iowa City. It is believed that Irish built a log cabin, probably in 1840, on the site marked here next to Reno Street Park. In 1849, Irish had this home built, not too far away. The home is referred to as Rose Hill, Rose Hill, and its entire 29 acreage was also referred to as Rose Hill. Irving Weber said the name was described because of the profusion of wild roses that once grew on the hill. Later, this house was, a built, was built where the log cabin was, so we're reverting now to that other property. In fact, the story has it that this home was built around the log cabin, and today, the dining room is perhaps where at least part of the log structure still exists. It's on Cedar Street. The house passed through different ownerships, and today, it is owned by a former dental patient of mine. The house is on a very large lot of about three acres, which makes the property almost unsurpassed in size for an Iowa City residential property. Now returning to the other home that Irish built in 1849. The home stayed in the Irish family until the 1960s. Captain Irish's granddaughter, Jane, who was a spinster, was the last Irish descendant to reside there. She was trapped in the house on November 22nd, 1950, when fire broke out. She was rescued, uninjured, but the home was badly damaged. The fire may have been started by a kerosene lamp. Several lamps were burning when firemen arrived. The home had no electricity. Jane passed away in 1963, and the entire 29 acres of property came up for sale. Unfortunately, the home, as left vacant, was broken into and ransacked. In September of 1964, a group of over 120 persons met in the city council chambers for an informational meeting on Rose Hill. Almost all of them were in favor of the city buying the property and developing it, developing it into a park. But the city council announced that it had reached an informal decision to give way to Mercy Hospital for them to buy the property and construct a new hospital there. So we may have had Mercy there. The plan was then that Mercy might convert its existing hospital into a convalescent center. Well, of course, Mercy did not buy the property, but Iowa City bought a portion of it, 17.5 acres, with the intention of developing it into a park. And that would leave about 11 acres for something else. The city would have, would have bought all 29 acres, but the council decided it would be too large of an outlay of money and cut the Rose Hill purchase about in half. I guess money-wise. 
The sale of the 17 and a half acres left an 11 acre horseshoe shaped area available for a new subdivision. The developers chose a very appropriate name, Rose Hill. And here's the plat for the new development, which was divided into 38 lots, one of which included the 1849 Rose Hill house shown in red. Well, the house was slated for demolition. The developer who purchased the land indicated that work would begin to demolish it very soon. The house was almost covered with trees and underbrush. The new owner said it would just be too costly, too much of an amount of work, although real nice if they could have saved it. Here's a 1964 photo showing the state of disrepair that Rose Hill was in. The home was not demolished, but sold. It has been restored to as we see it here. It has the address of 1415 Davenport Street. Tradition holds that the home may have been on the Underground Railroad. And here's the home as seen from the back. Lovely place, very thick walls. I don't remember what I read, perhaps 20 inches thick. Well, on December 7th of 1965, the voters of Iowa City went to the polls to decide on two bond issues totaling about $650,000 for various park facility expansion in Iowa City, different parts of the city. If passed, one key item was the establishment of a new park, as I said before, referred to as Northeast Park. The new park was to be, was described to be on 80 acres of city-owned woods and grassy slopes just east of the cemetery. The voters turned out in light numbers, as I said, but it passed with uh, no three-fourths of them voicing approval. This is a 1975 image of the park. We need to understand that the 80 acres was already owned by the city. So what was the 80 acres being used for prior to the new park? The area in blue represents the approximate size of Hickory Hill Park upon its establishment. And I'm showing some of the cemetery there in red and the future of the park you see in green. This is a current map of Iowa City. My shape is only an approximation. The original park was about 98 acres, which included the 80 acres already owned by the city, plus the 17 and a half, half acres of the Irish estate. Some of you may remember that Captain Irish was memorialized by the placement of his name on the road sign at the North Dodge Scott Boulevard intersection. Well, that didn't last very long. His name was replaced by the name Scott Boulevard, which made sense because that was what the majority of the length of that roadway was. So to answer the question of what was the 80 acres already owned by the city being used for? Nothing in particular. It was land being naturalized. It was known as the cemetery pasture. As a little sidelight, I got a kick out of this story. In mid-August of 1973, police confiscated four 12 packs of beer after 14 juveniles were found in Hickory Hill Park. That would make an average of about three and one half beers each had they been able to drink them. They were turned over to the, to the Juvenile Bureau of the Iowa City Police Department. I wonder what they did to the poor kids. And I wonder if the police department made good use of the beer. In 1977, an attempt was made to purchase land for park expansion. It failed. The city declined to acquire 12 acres of land east of the park and north of Rochester Avenue. And this was in spite of more than 1,600 signed petitions requesting the purchase. Flood control on Ralston Creek has been a concern for decades before this dam was constructed on property next to Hickory Hill Park in 1982. I believe Regina owned the land upon which it was built. This was a controversial project with some environmentalists, but it was considered a necessity. At about the same time, this other dam was constructed on the south branch of Ralston Creek, the one in Hickory Hills on the north branch. When driving north of the Muscatine Avenue American Legion Road intersection on Scott, you were driving over the crest of the dam. Now returning to Hickory Hill Park. In 1981, the city bought about 43 acres of land 
from Donald Gatons. That's an old family name that goes way back in Iowa City history to the beginning of the, of the town. And the purpose was to accommodate floodwaters behind the North Branch Stormwater Detention Facility. That's the formal name for the dam. And floodwater conditions, a lot of this land could be put under water. In fact, during severe rains, water could back up covering about 50 acres and be up to 30 feet deep at the dam. This dam was proposed at least 12 years before it was built at least that long before. In October of 1980, the city council established just compensation for the acquisition of property for the north branch of the Ralston Creek Stormwater Detention Project. $148,000 to the Iowa City Roman Catholic Vicarate of Education for the title and access easement to 43.7 acres of Regina High School. So now you see we are acquiring land from the Gatons and Regina to become part of the park. Let's give you a little history on Regina. Regina High School was built in 1957 as the new Catholic Central High School. It was built on 105 acres. The land was purchased about January of 1955. And up until the opening of Regina, the city's existing parochial school, St. Mary's, which was built in 1892, and St. Patrick's, constructed in 1921, were not designed for high schools. They were too small and lacked facilities and equipment to match the current educational standards. In 1993, a group known as Friends of Bluffwood petitioned the city to move the historic Bluffwood House to Hickory Hill Park to serve as a nature and historical center. Others did not want to see a house moved into this wilderness area. This house was located on Rochester Avenue, about a half a mile east of First Avenue. Larch Lane to the north, a division of, of condos in there. After considerable opposition, the Friends of Bluffwood withdrew their request. By 1995, it became apparent that Oakland Cemetery was running out of space. At first, city officials considered using two to three acres of Hickory Hills land. The next year, the city council changed their view and desired to expand at least 10 acres into, the, into Hickory Hill Park. The issue of quote unquote land ownership came to a head a few years later with this consideration. It looks like this press city Press Citizen article's title was a pun. For many years, the land that many felt was purchased for cemetery use, but believed to be parkland by the opposing group, lay idle, continuing, continuing to naturalize. Considerable debate went on for several years. Park advocates cried bloody murder about the prospect of the cemetery stealing some of the woodland. On the other hand, convincing arguments were made that the land assigned to the original Hickory Hill Park was land that was purchased for burial ground. The matter came to a close when in April of 1998, the city council gave the go ahead on taking some Hickory Hill Park land. In the fall of 1999, work began on expanding into at least four acres of park land. You can imagine the reactions of some of those who witnessed the removal of the timber in that area. This is where I think the 1999 expansion was. If you can kind of see and get oriented there from that map. This is a present day look of the land at the southeast end of the cemetery that is on standby for more burials. And no doubt some woods had to be removed to make space for that. The question was this, was the land Hickory Hill Park ground or was it Oakland Cemetery's ground? Did the city council act properly in their quote unquote reassigning of the land? A man named Jim Walters, who was a brown, groundskeeper at the university, took the viewpoint that there was quote, no indication of a covenant agreement or understanding that this land would be exclusively for cemetery use. 
He further said, while well, some cemetery use may have been the original intention of Christian Gallicher, Gallicher in the city, it is nowhere stated in the record, either directly or indirectly. In 1999, Terry Trueblood rendered an opinion on the size of Hickory Hill Park that runs contrary to other opinions. Groups like the Sierra Club and Friends of Hickory Hill Park talk about 190 acres. The Iowa City website says 185 acres. Trueblood said the park contains only about 58 acres of dedicated parkland, since 92 acres are stormwater management area and 40 acres belongs to the cemetery. Terry Trueblood, you know the recreation area is named for him, a fairly long time director of Parks and Rec, he died in 2009. In the spring of 1999, the Friends of Hickory Hill Park was founded by a group of Iowa City residents to quote, protect the park from further encroachment. And then they were incorporated in June of 2000. They're dedicated to the preservation of the park as a natural sanctuary. In January of 2000, sharpshooters from White Buffalo, which is a nonprofit organization, it killed 360 deer within the city limits of Iowa City. Now, there was a lot of shooting in other areas of Iowa City parks, not just Hickory Hill Park. In December 2000, January 2001, a two-week period of sharpshooting took place in the park, killing 340 deer. Several other hunts have followed. The action was, is controversial, with some citizens objecting to the shooting either because of safety issues or the propriety of the action. A 2020 hunt just finished up this past March. In 2001, an article appeared in the Press Citizen that described a dreaded spreading invasion known as garlic mustard weed. Friends of Hickory Hill Park organized volunteers to aid in weed pulling. Today, a botanist friend of mine told me that it really appears to be a losing battle. In 2002, an attempt at park expansion failed when Friends of Hickory Hill Park fell short of purchasing adjacent land that became Hickory Heights. More than $50,000 was raised in an effort to buy property of that subdivision. The, 20, the 18, or I'm sorry, the 18 and a half or so acre patch was actually property of the Press Citizen and they sold it to Hickory Heights LLC. The thought was that the 50,000 would be used for future projects for the park. In 1997, the issue of extending First Avenue to the north was put before the voters. In November, the voters chose to delay the extension for two years. So First Avenue ended about one block north of Hickory Trail. Many arguments were made against the extension. It would destroy the serenity of the park. It would create too much traffic along schools farther south on First Avenue. It would create noise pollution, which goes along with the serenity issue. The list goes on. Well, two years passed, but in 1999 or 2000, the road was still not extended. Scott Boulevard was being extended to join with North Dodge Street. The First Avenue extension proposal finally passed and on November 1st, 2002, the Scott Boulevard and First Avenue extensions opened simultaneously. I remember that day very well. I drove down Scott Boulevard and watched the owners of the big brown barn waving to all who passed by. The press citizen noted, quote, after six years of discussion and more than one year of construction, the most controversial road project in Iowa City's recent history is finally complete. Now let's talk a little bit about the Pappy Dickens Preserve. Some of you may not even be familiar with it. It's a 16.5 acre woods and prairie that borders Hickory Hill Park. Just a lovely wooded ground that I walked through a couple of weeks ago. The Friends of Hickory Hill Park was instrumental in purchasing this acreage for Mr. Willa Dickens. And it will be responsible for managing the preserve for the Burr Oak Land Trust. This was the first successful attempt by Friends 
to buy a parcel of land bordering the park. I think it was in 2008. And it was purchased in order to form a buffer between Hickory Hill Park and any future housing developments. Some of you may know Willa from Hertine and Stalker. A few years ago, I was doing some research on the Jefferson Hotel. And that, of course, is where Hertine and Stalker is located. And one of the workers said he thought Willa would be a better source for my questions. Expecting a woman to appear, I learned otherwise when Willa showed up. Bordering on the Pappy Dickens Preserve is a four acre tract that was gifted to the Johnson County Heritage Trust. This was given through the estate of Patricia Edberg. You can see that Pappy Dickens borders right on the Hickory Hill property here and you can ac access it right off of North Dodge. You have to go down a little narrow roadway, but then there, and there's not really a parking lot, a little space for a few cars, but you'd kind of be blocking the others, but it's a neat little place. You can also just walk right through Hickory Hill Park on a trail and I'm sorry, right up here and join right into it. In the spring of 2011, a group of University of Iowa students spent three weeks in the park and they were looking for artifacts of prehistoric Native Americans. They found an arrowhead and small remnants of clay pottery. The remnants were estimated to be about a thousand years old. Their challenge lay in where to look. They tested three spots and the one that they excavated seemed to contain items preserved from the Oneota time period from late prehistoric ancestors of the Native Americans or the woodland people, according to the newspaper article. Today, in a section of the park near the border with the cemetery, we find some remnants of a concrete foundation. It is believed that in about 1915, 1-5, a house was constructed there and used until sometime into the 20s, so not a long time. It was known as a pest house, P-E-S-T, pest house. Persons with communicable diseases such as smallpox were relegated to live there without the benefit of visitors. Those with diphtheria and scarlet fever may have also have been sent there. Not a very nice term, but it was one used widely, therefore not just a local moniker. Other terms used by communities were plague house and fever shed. This pest house was believed by Irving Weber Weber to be the third one in Iowa City. In 1974, Weber wrote that the foundation was about 200 yards from the edge of the cemetery ground. Now, 46 years later, it would only be about 50 yards from the eastern edge of the cemetery, a witness to the expansion of the burial ground that I talked about. I'd like to give a shout out to groups such as the Boy Scouts, which have done volunteer work in the park over the years. The scouts were instrumental in constructing some of the smaller wooden bridges. And now a word about St. Joseph Cemetery. Like Oakland Cemetery, land for St. Joseph's was acquired in 1843. We believe that 80 acres was secured from the government by the right Reverend Matthias Loris, for whom Loris College was later named. This was upon the advice of Father Mazzuccelli who directed the building of the first St. Mary's Church in 19, 1841. Near the North Dodge High V are two streets, St. Matthias Alley and St. Clement Street. You can understand that these names are what they are in the context of the nearby purchases of land by the Catholic Church. As part of my summary here is the relationship between the two cemeteries and Hickory Hill Park. The area of the original Hickory Hill Park is shown by the area outlined in red. The present day park includes that and all of the green colored areas except for the Pappy Dickens Preserve. But it's connected by a trail and it can be enjoyed by all. The tan area to the west right here, if you can see my cursor, is St. Joseph Cemetery. The portion of it outlined in blue is what's called Old St. Joseph Cemetery. St. Joseph's has a larger area than Oakland. In Oakland, it's divided by the dashed line here. So Oakland is below the dashed black line. 
Oakland, as I had said before, about 40 acres. If you drive down Conklin Lane, which should be here, if you can see me coming in, to go into the north entrance of the park, the woods off to your right is really part of St. Joseph Cemetery, not part of Hickory Hill Park. The area of the park north of the red outline represents the Gaten's addition to the park. And the area of green south and east of the red is the Regina High School addition. The black triangular area is my estimate of the 1999 expansion of Oakland Cemetery. And finally, the forest sided yellow figure is where the Patricia Edberg donation of about four acres is. So in summary, in 1965, Hickory Hill Park was carved out of land that was purchased for purposes of burying the dead. It was established as a nature park in 1965 and it remains so today after 53 years. From the original single entrance from Conklin Lane, we now have seven access points. 7th Avenue near Rochester Avenue, the north end of 7th Avenue, Conklin Lane, the east end of Bloomington Street, 1st Avenue, the end of Hickory Heights Lane, and directly from Oakland Cemetery near the Pest House. There's a little room left for expansion of the park, the park but the park has plenty of area to romp around in and enjoy. Depending on the time of the year, the park offers opportunities for hiking, picnicking, cross country skiing, dog walking, and just communing with nature. Thank you. Hi, Tom. Just a question. I, a friend and I were cross country skiing several years ago in Hickory Hill Park. And we were approached by an officer wondering what we were doing and it was obvious what what we were doing is there <laughs> has there been issues in that area what did the officer say just what what are you doing <laughs> well, well, that, well that's strange well we're, it was you're, you're sure you were on parkland well we thought we were <laughs> and even if you weren't it's a mighty strange thing it seems to me well that's weird so, I, I have curious. not heard of any issues. I've never okay. had any kind of, now dogs are, I know you didn't have a dog there. Dogs no. are supposed to be on leash. I don't care if they are as long as they're well behaved, but, and you see a lot of that. You even see bicycles, which aren't supposed to be there, but I can't imagine what in the world uh, the officer okay. was talking about. Well, maybe somebody had called and complained or something. We, we didn't know. We just wrapped it up. It was getting late anyway, so we left. I like somebody's comment here. She rode her Honda 50 in the park with friends in 1969. <laughs> oh, her Honda 60. That's great. Actually, uh, that was my comment, Tom. Um, uh, motor, motor scooter. Oh, was it Ball or Deb who rode the Honda? It was, I was the Honda 50 rider with oh, okay. uh, my buddies, and it was really good uh, motocross. Oh, I bet it was fun. <laughs> but yeah. uh, wow. we didn't do it very often, but it was <laughs> really and I think maybe there weren't any regulations at that time um well I think if the police would have seen us <laughs> we would have been in trouble a very nice event that takes place every year on Thanksgiving morning is the Legends of the Fall which is a four mile trail run through Hickory Hill Park and it starts mm -hmm. at the high school at Regina High School and then goes down mm -hmm. and crosses that uh, dam and then does up and down trails uh, through the park. Well, that's neat. Yeah, it that's, is. It's a I'm, very well attended event and it's fun. And it's nice I imagine Jim morning. Fuller has, has done bird walks through there. Oh, uh, sure. Birding walks, you know. Jim Fuller, yeah. our former colleague, is quite uh -huh. the birder. Sure. But what did you all think about the land being cemetery land? Yeah. Tom, I have a question. This is Carol. Hi, Carol. Uh, the two big open fields, one of them comes right up to First Avenue. It's yep. on the edge of the park. Yep. Is that park land? And uh, sort of, it's noticeably different. You know, it's a field, that, not woods. Maybe. And I'm, I'm, I'm curious, like, it, was that part of one of the purchases? Or what can you tell me about that piece of the park? Now, if we, if I'm looking back on 
there's quite a bit of land that is just wet. Once you get north of about Hickory Hill, Hick, what is it called? Hickory Lane, Hickory Hill Lane. What's the name of our street, Viv? Hickory Trail. Hickory Trail. I should know that. I go on it every day. Once we get north of Hickory Trail, to the east of First Avenue <laughs> is not parkland. That is likely ACT property or somebody else's. You have to go over a ways before you get to parkland. <clears throat> so that open field area uh -huh. may, I'm not sure how far from First Avenue you're referring to. Well, well, a piece of it abuts, you know where the new Oak, Oakdale is, or uh, the Oak new- Oak Knoll. Um, yes. Oak Knoll. Yes, that's not the park, no. That part that's is not, not the park. Because I cross country ski in that field. So oh. if, you, if you go from First Avenue, on Scott Boulevard toward Dodge, mm -hmm. when you get to Hickory Heights, none of that that you have passed is is parkland. Okay, okay, so that- so there, those And are, there are woods there as well as open fields. Because there are trails that go from Hickory Hill into those fields. Yes, yeah. Okay. I believe that land is owned by ACT. The, our church was trying to buy the land north of Scott, where Oak Knoll is, and that was owned by the Larson family. Mm -hmm. Tom, yes. I don't know if you are, uh, know this, because I don't. I think some of the land that is now owned by ACT and maybe even some of the Regina land was originally part of the Larson farm, but I don't. Oh, know. I don't know that, uh, Paul, no. I'm thinking of our friends north of us who have some of the land that is on the east side of First Avenue. I thought perhaps they might have had that too. You know who I mean? Yeah, so that'd be the Hamdorfs. Yes, yes. Um, Tom, this is my name is Galen and I have a question about Louise. Louise Jane. I, I'm in Hickory Hill Park several times a week and I always see that stone denoting <laughs> her and I've thanked her many times in my mind for who I thought she was a main player in creating the park. Uh, but you only mentioned her in passing that she had something to do with naming the park. I, I think she came up with a name according to what I've read, yes. I, I mean, I, and I, I now understand, and I kind of did before, that a lot of it was just the blessing of having this land. But I, I didn't know if she was a person who had really uh, lobbied and, and made it happen but you only mentioned her in passing so maybe i've been thanking her all these times for nothing <laughs> i wonder you know that's a that's a good thing to explore i'm wondering if perhaps the impetus was the purchase of the of the irish property of the 17 and a half acres being adjacent to the cemetery land if that wasn't combined with hey let's just make this part bigger and established in 1964-65. Uh -huh. I yeah. don't know what was the driving force there other than the fact that that adjacent property came up for sale a little bit before the park was established. Okay. Well, and you know, the fact that she is she is no, noted in the park, you probably know where I mean, right by I the don't. pest house. Oh, it's, it's right by the pest house. It's right I, near the cemetery. It's a great mean, big stone. Yeah, you mean and the, it, the signage that shows the on one side, the layout of the park, and the other talks no. about the pest house. No, it's way, way, way before that. This, where I'm talking about, has been there ever since I've lived here for 22 years. Is it it's near the Bloomington Street entrance when you? No, it's right by the. Hill? It's right by the getting right before you get to Oakland Cemetery as you're walking, you know, across the dam and you walk on, on up. Mm -hmm. it, it, and it's a big, it's a it's big stone, and and it's a signage mm -hmm. giving her credit. Although the sign needs to be, it's it's dilapidating. I, I mean, uh, I'm there all the time, and I I've it, always thought she was the one. She was the reason we had this park. <laughs> oh well, that's interesting. That's, that's interesting. Yeah. Anyway, anything more we could find out about that? It would be great to. Well, also to bear in mind that the city had the bond issue that included not only Hickory Hills proposed land but a lot of others, including property down by. Southeast Junior High, which was Mercer Park, I believe. And so there were a number of packages of property that were combined in that bond issue. Uh, so I, I don't know any further than that. 
Okay. Well, it was very enlightening what you told us today. Thank you. Oh, good. I'm glad you liked it. Tom, I have a, I have a couple questions. Um, I noticed a lot of benches are dedicated to different people. Do we know anything about the benches? Oh, oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. I should have taken Benches. pictures and investigated that a little bit. I'll do that. I don't have any information on that. And my other question was, wasn't there a professor who committed suicide in that park? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, there was. I believe that was, oh, in the last 20 years, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I remember that. Mm -hmm. There, there was. The professor, she said, who committed suicide. <laughs> And there's and there's also um, there's also still a, a really remarkable memorial to the young man who got shot by the police mm -hmm. by his parents, er Eric Shaw. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tom, was the pest house operated by the city? Who owned that? I don't think so, but I don't know. Does anybody know on that? Weber thought Weber thought that was a third of of the three pest houses, but I don't know. That is an interesting okay. question too. It would almost seem like it was uh, some kind of a public endeavor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there isn't much to see there. But just out of for fun, you can look if you haven't. It's just a harsh part of the foundation. Yeah. But there's a sign that is right on the trail. Yeah, I, I've, re I've read that. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Uh, Tom, the uh, Hickory Hill Park is a, is a, a jewel. It's, it's really a wonderful it, it part really, of it. Uh, it really is. Yeah, Iowa City and, in fact, the entire metropolitan area, there's nothing comparable. Do you know if there are other cities, towns of similar size in Iowa or in this area that have a park as large and as versatile as Hickory Hill Park? I don't know, Rick. Anybody? It is a fabulous area. If any of you have not gone in there, please do. You can. Get I have out. another question along the same line. I wondered oh. if if there was ever any push for, you know, it's it's maintained as a as a wilder, as a you know no not developed park. You know, right. no playgrounds, uh, very few picnic shelters. You know, it's mostly woods. Right. Um, I wonder Sorry. how they managed to keep that. I it's, was, I, it's great that they have. It's, it's yeah. kept almost just exactly like it was envisioned as a nature park and as mm -hmm. the Hickory Hill Park hope to keep it. I suppose it's always possible that the city can intervene and do something with a portion of it. Let's hope not. But like I mentioned before, what was the propriety of the city coming in and changing what was dedicated yeah. burial ground? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's an interesting issue. And you can see where they might need just a little chunk. My goodness, he just took a little piece of it for the cemetery. And it's like, wow, mm -hmm. these people probably thought this is this is parkland. Don't grab that. But mm -hmm. It was yeah. set aside for burial land way more than you'd ever need. And today, there, it's being reversed from the number of burials versus number of cremations. So we've got more cremations. So the demands on the space will probably be less as the years go by. I, I could just, I just want to say something about the park. I live a block away also from the First Avenue entrance and I love where I live, but the number one reason I love where I live is that park. It mm -hmm. is it is just a wonder. Mm -hmm. It is. It's great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Has anybody ever seen the water back up behind the dam in a in a large rainfall? Mm -hmm. I I have not. I've seen it back up on the other dam that's on Scott Boulevard and all the way up into Rita's Ranch Dog Park. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's exactly what it's intended for, to be a back, mm -hmm. backwater area. Mm -hmm. Then the water can slowly be released downstream. <clears throat> uh, Tom, are those, well, like those are retention uh, dams, is there a, a shutoff system that goes 
to stop the flow of water so it can be retained? How, how does that work? 